First, the glass portion which begins its life in the mixing room, where carefully weighed amounts of the raw materials are placed into a hopper. After the contents have been thoroughly mixed, the hopper is taken to the furnace room and placed in position on a melting tank. An automatic device gradually feeds the raw materials into the tank, which is heated to approximately 1400 degrees centigrade. Each furnace runs night and day for many months and only stops when a tank needs to be rebuilt. At the other end of the huge tanks, the glass is drawn off in the form of tubes of various sizes, an internal current of air keeping the molten glass in tubular form and controlling its diameter. As it ascends, external air streams cool it and control the thickness of the wall. Passing through holes in the ceiling, the continually rising columns of glass emerge into an upper room. Here, the tube is cut into standard lengths, and each length is gauged and weighed to check its dimensions. These lengths are again cut into pieces of various sizes during the manufacture of many types of glass components in valves, cathode ray tubes, transistors, etc. Tubes of smaller diameter are cut to the correct length by means of this automatic apparatus. The base also contains metal pins of a special construction. These are made in the wire factory from several different kinds of wire, cut into short lengths and welded end to end. To understand why this is necessary, let us examine a typical pin. First, the thicker portion. This is the part which will be pushed into a valve socket and therefore must be strong. Secondly, the center portion which will be buried in the glass. This must be made of a metal which will expand and contract at the same rate as the glass, otherwise the base would crack or leak. And finally, the electrode, which completes the electrical connections in the valve. This machine is cutting and welding the pieces together and packing the finished pins into boxes ready for dispatch to the base making department. Now the bases are transferred to the cut and bend section and here we see this operation being carried out. The base electrodes are cut to length. Then they are inserted into another machine which bends them into the correct positions to mate up with their respective components in the cage assembly. Returning to the assembly section, we see the base being welded to the cage. All the electrical connections are now made. The getter and cooling plates are also welded on at this stage. The only component still to be added is the glass bulb. In the glass factory, the bulbs are made by placing lengths of tubing into a machine, which seals the end of the tube forms it to the correct shape, cuts off the required length, and flares and polishes the cut end. The finished bulbs are deposited onto a conveyor belt and transported to a tubulating machine. This machine attaches a hollow stem to the bulb which will be used later to extract the air from the valve.
The machine automatically transfers the bulbs to a chain conveyor. Every bulb is tested for leaks by means of a powerful electric spark, which will find even the slightest defect. Should a leak be found, the machine automatically rejects the bulb. The inspector subjects each bulb to a thorough visual check. Only bulbs which are of good appearance are allowed to leave the department, any chipped or misshapen ones being rejected. After washing, the bulbs are stacked to await dispatch to the valve factory. Here in the bulbing section, we see them being fitted to a valve assembly. The next step is to seal the assembly into the glass bulb and then pump out the air, so forming a vacuum. Here is the sealing machine which performs the first of these operations. Blowpipe flames soften the glass at the junction of the bulb and base, fusing the two components together. The valve is next transferred to a rotary pump. The machine revolves and air is pumped out of the valves as they pass through coils carrying a high frequency current. This heats up the metal parts of the valve, assisting in the evacuation process. At the last stage, the getter is fired. This releases barium, which condenses on the inside of the bulb. Its function is to trap and absorb any minute traces of gas which may be left in the valve. When evacuation is complete, the stem is sealed off and the valve removed from the pump. On the latest type of machine, the bulbing is done by the machine operator. The valves are automatically transferred from the conveyor belt to the sealing machine and then to the pump. complete the treatment of the valve, it is now activated in a device known as a screen. This causes chemical changes to take place in the cathode coating and is necessary in order to make the valve work.